my body doesn't, um, it resists uh, the absorption of phosphorus. So I take a calcitriol and neutrophos to um, help my bones absorb phosphorus and vitamin D. Um, when I was younger, my bones looked very porous, almost sponge-like, and I didn't start having real true dental issues until I was about 19. For the early years of my life, it was mostly just my legs, and as I got older, it became uh, apparent that my teeth were, were severely infected by the illness. You've been my patient for a lot of years, and we've been dealing with your teeth, and you've really been a champ, and so brave, <laughs> Thank you. and always smiling through all this. <laughs> I mean, your teeth were basically porous. They would just die mm -hmm. without any, you know, reason. Uh, they spontaneously develop abscesses, and we would have root canals. And along the way, we lost a couple of them. Uh, and they're they're also very dark in color because there's a very poor enamel right. on them. It's it's like a very thin, glassy enamel. Um, prone and to infection. Prone to infection because we had a lot of uh, abscesses that wouldn't heal properly and uh, let's have a look at the x-rays. front area has been bugging you for a long time, right? Right. And uh, it survived for almost 10 years isn't it? with a splint. We actually splint up the lower teeth together. It's been more than 10 years. Yeah, more than 10 years. And then that tooth eventually right there, the lower right molar, developed a fistula so that has to come out today. A few weeks ago we had to extract the top molar and the premolar. They were severely infected, right? Yeah. There is one more that needs to come out. This is typical of your bones. They just develop cysts, abscesses, and they don't heal well. So I'm not going to bother doing an apicectomy on this one because it may not even work. I've had one before. I've had a cyst before that you, you removed several years ago. So how do you generally feel? Most days. Yeah. Um, I have very low energy. Um, I get migraines often. I mean, I feel happy about life, but my body itself doesn't, it, it, I ache a lot. I have uh, degenerative arthritis, which bothers me. Um, and I'm in physical therapy a few times a week to keep my muscles conditioned and for my body to be able to move regularly. Um, yeah, I, I, I think health-wise it's declined a lot since I've had all these infections, so I'm looking forward to the infection being cleared out and what that will mean for my whole system. So unfortunately, we may not be able to put implants uh, in, in your bone, but at some point, if the bone stays calm and quiet, uh, we may do a scan and then we may try one and see how it works. Because zirconia is very biocompatible and as long as you have bone, it may actually uh, get integrated. So what, what is the condition exactly called? It's vitamin D resistant. Um, I'm vitamin D resistant. It's yeah. X-linked hypophosphatemia. The names mm -hmm. change throughout the years mm -hmm. um, because it's not typical rickets. Mm -hmm. Typical rickets is just a deficiency, but my body resists it. So when I get, take phosphorus in, my body pushes it right back out. So I've had stints where even if I take it intravenously, within a few hours, the numbers drop right back down again. Mm -hmm. um, do you take vitamin D? I do. I take calcitriol, which is a form of vitamin D. Um, and then I also take D3. But it helps a little bit. It does help. Yeah. And my numbers are back. I'm in the low range of normal right now. For a while, I was much lower than, than I was out of range. I was below range. And so I've had a few hospital stays because of that, because mm. it just got too low. She's a trooper, and she's had lots of um, hospital experiences that she's survived and made her way through. So. She has an amazing personality, doesn't she? Yes, she we does. always love seeing her. She she always does. smiling she and upbeat when she's here. She hangs in through all of this trauma and drama, and it's, um, yeah. How old are you now? 40 something? 41. 41. Mm -hmm. And we've been dealing with this since she was 18 months. Wow. Because she didn't, didn't walk 
could stand up. She couldn't because her bones were too spongy and it's gone into her teeth. And she's still going. She gets close to the edge in the hospital, but she bounces back. But I think considering you've been remarkable with your teeth, I mean, you still have most of your teeth and at this point, you know, you are losing a few, but generally, I think you will keep most of your teeth throughout your whole life. Yeah. We'll make sure. I have a really good yeah. dentist. <laughs> <laughs> yes, really the best. So today we're going to draw some blood uh, and prepare some PRF, which we're going to insert into the extraction sites. Yeah. And we're not going to use any particulate graft because uh, because of the infection, and you may not assimilate it that well. Okay. But PRF is from your own blood, so it'll assimilate and allow you to heal much faster. Okay. Easy peasy. You mean you've got red blood? <laughs> <laughs> These four teeth are splinted together, and uh, this is the one that we have to extract, right here. This whole area is already inflamed and infected. Open a little wider, so if you look behind here, there's a splint. So what we're going to do is, we don't want her to be without any teeth today, so we're going to actually leave her tooth in place, and we're going to cut off the root at this point, extract the root, clean the bone, and put PRF inside, and suture it up. After it completely heals and the gum level is stable, then we'll cut out this section of her tooth and build something with composite, hopefully without disturbing that splint.
So we took the front root out. It's all cleaned out, ready to receive the PRF. And we'll put a couple of stitches and then we'll continue on the right side. How are you feeling? Good. Great. I, I didn't break that, those glasses, did I? That wasn't you. That wasn't you. <laughs> <laughs>